already know what it is. It's Barbershop Conversations. Hit the subscribe and the like button today. Barbershop Conversation, guys. Feel free to hit the subscribe button. So I just obviously talk of the potential fights. Canelo, Charlo, who wins? Now, first let me say, no doubt the fight will be in Texas. <laughs> and as I was talking to Richard Schaefer last night, it was like somebody's O got to go. But Canelo's not undefeated. So somebody's O got to get X out. I don't know, something like that. So my guess, this is hypothetical, guys. But it'll be in Texas. You know what I mean? And um, how they will square off in the ring. First of all, those are two fighters that won't be able to get out of each other's way. And when you got fighters that can't get out of each other's way, it'll be difficult to get through 12 rounds. I don't think the body can hold up with those two guys in front of each other. Now let's talk about Canelo's advantage. I think Canelo has an advantage in the experience department. And I think he may be younger, right? I'm not sure of each other's age, but I think Canelo's 26. Help me out, guys. And Canelo is steadily improving. And he's improving at a, I believe, at a faster rate than Charlo. And I believe Canelo has better punch variances than uh than Charlo. Canelo does a good job at going to the going to the body with that with that angular hook. You know, when he bends down, his right guard is up. When he bends down, he digs deep. And then he comes up top. He does a good job at uh, feigning and throwing overhand right, as he did Amir Khan. His flexibility above his waist has been, an upper body flexibility has been incredibly increasing. And uh, HBO has a clip where they're praising him. It's the funniest. It's the funniest junk ever. And then there's a Floyd Mayweather clip doing pretty much the same thing. And look at Floyd Mayweather dodging him, running. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. I need to find those clips so you guys can see them. I'm pretty sure you probably could just Google it. Somebody probably made a video of it already. But Canelo, punch. He does a hell of a job at finding spots on the body as he did Cotto. Just find just find spots to land a punch. It may not get through all the time, but just find find punches. And he has in my eyes, he has thudding power. Thudding power is the power where when you're in a fight, I'm not sure many of you guys are sparred, but you in a fight and you like you get second thoughts. You you, <laughs> you get, just just be real with you guys. You literally get second thoughts. You, you find another way to maneuver inside the ring. Whereas Charlo has electric power. Electric power radiates through your entire body. As you saw with J-Rock last night. <laughs> There's no way you're getting up from one of his clear shots. With that being said, both of them has a, can find a way to knock each other out. So I, I'm not saying that... But I think uh, Charlo has a better chance at one punch knockout power as opposed to, to Charlo. Now, Charlo's advantage is he'll be one of the few opponents that's durable enough, physically durable enough to fight a Canelo Alvarez. He's one of the few opponents at that weight class that has the athleticism to fight a Canelo Alvarez. And three... Similar to um, James Kirkland with Ann Wolf, by what I looked in his eyes and his menacing approach towards boxing, he'll have the mental approach to want to defeat an American, I mean, excuse me, a Canelo Alvarez once he realizes his plan A doesn't work. I believe he'll still mentally stay in the fight, which is pretty challenging. We saw it last couple of weeks ago with Lomachenko and Walters where when Walter's just mentally checked out. But where, now let's go to the uh, the weaknesses. Charlo's biggest weakness against Canelo will be his lack of punch variances. He he was pretty consistent through the rounds against J-Rock. One, two, one, two, one, two, three. Um, 
never really never really got small in the pocket, never really bent his knees, um, was wide on a lot of hooks, um, throws a good right hand, but it stays on that line. He doesn't throw uh, straight right hands to the middle of your chest. He didn't bend his knees and throw uh, the Floyd Mayweather jab to the solar plex. That will be his big weaknesses. And the second weakness that I saw is, this is just recently, guys, but uh, second, third, the last third of the fight, power kind of depreciates. Like most fighters, but it seemed like it's a drastic drop-off between phase one, phase two, phase three. I mean, and, and when you break it up in four rounds. He's a little more plotty, but he's going to look less plotty against a Canelo Alvarez. Now, Canelo Alvarez's weaknesses, I would say, is his feet. It will forever be his feet. Forever be his feet. Um, but where Canelo can make up for it is his ring intelligence. Who walks backwards first? That will be the key to the fight and will encourage the other fighter. Uh, Canelo can go to a counter game. Easily can go to a counter game. Easily. Um, I think Canelo is a better conditioned athlete than Charlo right now in his career. I think Canelo is tough. I don't think there's no bitch in Canelo. And right now, although, I mean, this is just a spontaneous conversation. This, so I really, I really haven't. Uh, the contract is not signed, so I really haven't like delved into the details of the fight. But I would have Canelo win in this fight, especially if it's in Texas, and this no other place it would rather be is in Texas. So I would choose Canelo to win this fight, um, either by late stoppage or unanimous decision in Texas. So uh, that's my prediction. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I really wouldn't have a dog in this fight. You know, I'm not. I'm not the huge Charlo fan. Not a huge Charlo fan. Not a huge Canelo fan. But what I do appreciate about Canelo is the person he, the only loss, the only person he lost to, Floyd Mayweather. He's patterned his career after Floyd Mayweather. So keep in mind when people were saying, "Oh, Floyd only fought people that were." Uh, when he knew he could beat him, same goes for Canelo Alvarez. So, uh, barbershop conversation. Feel free to let me know what you guys think. Add more details to it. This can be a conversation we can go until Canelo announces his next opponent, and and how, what a great convenience is that we have a Golden Boy event all week, starting on Tuesday. So hopefully we'll see Oscar, and I'll be able to ask many questions about. Canelo, Charlo, what he thought of Charlo, um, you know, how's this, how's Canelo healing, what's next, obviously he won't tell us, but uh, we'll have to sit back and see, so Barbershop Conversations, hit the subscribe button, tell a friend, and uh, PBC was a fun event last night, 5,600 people were there last night, and uh, that Charlo J-Rock fight sucked everything out of that arena, I mean, <laughs> it's like the uh you know what it equates to it equates to like a thanksgiving dinner right you don't watch all football and now your cousins want to go shopping on black friday like i mean it's a necessity quite possible or it's a desired want but you really could pass up on it like that and that was mares Cuellar last night like it was a desire to want to watch the fight, but I'm full. I don't watch three football games. The Cowboys lost. I'm happy. Um, <laughs> so anyways, get a chuckle out of you guys. So barbershop conversation, guys. Uh, um, those are some good Thanksgiving spending time with family. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Charlo Canelo, who wins? Talk to you guys soon. Peace. Hey guys, it's your girl Angie. You're watching Barbershop Conversations. Make sure to click the button below to subscribe, like the video, don't like it, leave a comment. Um, you can also follow me at um, Angelica Curtis on Instagram. See you soon.